Good evening and welcome to a very windy workshop. In this video, I'd like to quickly go through what I managed to pick up in that random box of bits that I grabbed a few days ago and how it relates to the five inch gauge locomotive. This is where I'm keeping the majority of the, the raw castings that I've received as part of my bucket of bits. So in here, we've got some boiler tubes and some formers. These are, I think for the wrapper and this is for the copper and this is just a flanged end. In here, we have the driving and coupled wheels. Now these have already been machined and they seem to have been done pretty well. Um, I'll need to make sure the fit's good, but that's there. We have the coupling rods and the con rods. These are both laser cut from Model Engineers Laser and some spare bogey side frames. Now I ordered these before I got whist of this uh, box of bits. So these are actually probably not required, but at least there's some material to do something else with. And underneath here, these are some laser cut um, plate work for the cab, but this is for the L1 class, you can see, because it has two windows. The L class just has a teardrop shaped cutout. So we won't be using these. It'd be handy to use for something else, I'm sure. In here, we have more parts. These, this is the smoke box door and the front ring. We have the steam dome uh, cover and the steam dome itself and uh, the chimney. These are all gunmetal castings. Um, here we have the crank axle that has been fabricated for a Stevenson's link uh, valve gear. And I won't be building Stevenson's link because famously Curly Lawrence uh, didn't understand Stevenson's link, at least at the time he was writing the build series for this locomotive. And it doesn't work at all. So if you want Stevenson's link, you have to, not only is it more complicated, but you have to refer to additional drawings by people like Don Young to get it to work properly. So I'm not going with Stevenson's link, I'm going with Joy Valve Gear, uh, which means that uh, this is not going to be used. But, you know, good to have it. These here are the crossheads. Uh, these are the, I think these are also going to be in there, but these are for co connecting up to the, um, the conrods. Uh, over this side we have the drag beam and the buffer beam in this corner. We have the the bogey pivot plate and we have uh, a frame stretcher just down there. And in here we have the castings for the buffer housings. Uh, I have two designs of casting here and I don't think they're both for this locomotive so I've got to figure that one out. These are the eccentric straps and we have a cast iron cylinder block, but then the rest of these materials are gunmetal. So I think I need to replace that cast iron block with a gunmetal block, because otherwise the uh, thermal expansion will be different between the two types of materials, and I think that will cause problems. In addition to our magical front bogey, we also have some plate work. Now, these are, again, items which are designed ultimately for the L1. You'll notice it has this kink in the, the footplate. For the L-Class, this runs straight across, but these splashes are the full width and ac accommodate the connecting rods and uh, the wheels in that manner. So these won't actually be used. There's one here. And I have its partner here. So, unfortunately, these are no good to anybody. If anyone wants them, please let me know. You're free to collect them whenever you want. Here are the frames for the tender. Now, these are going to be super handy. They are already marked out for various drilling holes. So, that's quite nice. And they also have laser cut locomotive frames. Um, and much like the bogey frames, I ordered these before I found that trove of castings and bits and bobs. And that came with these two, which are machined, drilled, and with the horns fitted. So I don't know how accurate this is, and I'll have to figure out a way to measure that. But, I mean, I can definitely, like one of these frames is a bit bowed. Um, but, um, a lot of the work's been done for me on this one. So if I can straighten that out, then 
this should be a, a nice shortcut to get us a bit further along. For reference, these are these little horn plates that we did, horn stays, and the horn stays just fit on to the bottom just there. That's where they fit. Hopefully you're as excited as I am about seeing what's in that box. We're actually really quite close to having a rolling chassis. Uh, we'll need to machine a few components and it won't be complete by any stretch. Uh, but I believe if we manage to put together the axle boxes and a bogey pin, uh, then we can use some dummy axles and get the wheels on them and we can see if it rolls around. Maybe I can ride it around the workshop or something.